Hello, hello, this is Aaron Stern with a new After Effects tutorial. This time we'll have some fun with my favorite tool in After Effects, the text tool. As you might have noticed by now, I'm a big fan of After Effects text animators. You can watch a few of my previous lessons to get some ideas about what can be achieved using type and text animators inside After Effects. So in this two-part tutorial, I thought to show you two more tricks which I'm sure you'll find handy and maybe even consider to use them in your own project. Who knows, right? Okay, so we're going to build an audio waves animation and also the famous counting circle that you see while you're waiting for video to load on most of the websites. I'll begin with the audio waves trick. So let's create a new comp. Size should be 250 by 250 pixels using the square pixels aspect ratio. I'll name it audio waves and set the duration to 1.15, which is one second and 15 frames, and then click OK. Now grab the text tool and define your font. I'll choose Chaparral Pro with a size of 100 and tracking value of 150. I'll make sure the fill color is set to white and then I'll type four closed parentheses on the keyboard. Now I'll press the enter key to accept my typing. Next press the apostrophe key to call up the title and action safe so we can see the middle point of the comp and let's place the text in the middle. Now open the text and choose to add a scale animator. Change the value of the scale to 250%. Now we need to change the alignment of the text so the animation we are about to create will generate itself from the middle of the parentheses. For that, open the more options and change the grouping alignment on the Y axis until it sits nicely in the middle of the comb. You can now close this value to make some room to work and in order to create the growing shape that I'm after, let's drill down the advance under the range selector 1 and change the shape to ramp up. Voila! We have our ramp text going from 100 to 250% thanks to the ramp up feature. Now you can close this whole animator and let's call it scale up so we'll know what it does and now we want to simulate the pulse effect so let's make sure to select the word text here and choose to add another animator this time it will be opacity reduce the opacity value to zero open range selector one and set a keyframe for the start at zero in the first frame now move forward to one second and set it to 100%. You can press the space bar to preview what it looks like. Let's create a backward animation that will hide it back to the first stage. We can do it very easily by adding a second range selector and animate it the other way around to create this effect. So make sure to press the add near animator one and from there choose selector range. This will add a second range animator which we are free to change as we like. As you see, the current state of the new selector will dismiss what we've generated, so first we need to set it back to the states we were in. Make sure you're still at one second and change the start value to 100% and the end to zero. Then change the offset to minus 100%. This will flip the values and also returns the text to the state that it was. Now we need to animate the offset value. I want it to start its course while the upper one is near its end. So let's move to 17 frames or so and set a keyframe there. Now go to the end of the comp and change the offset back to zero. In order to make this animation flow better, I'll change the upper range selector last keyframe to an easy ease in keyframe by pressing shift plus F9. Just to keep things tidy, I'll name this animator revealer. 
and create another RAM preview. Brilliant, this looks perfect and now we're going to render this so we can use it later. Go to Composition and choose Make Movie. Press the Output module, choose QuickTime as the format, set the Post Render action to Import and then press the Format options and choose PNG. Make sure to set the channels to RGB plus Alpha so it will include the alpha channel in the render. Now press OK and press Render. It should take a second or so to render this and now you can see the result clip is waiting in the project panel. Let's create our main comp now and test how it looks. I have here a clip named 3D Speaker which I will drag on to the Make New Comp icon. What seems to look like a 3D speaker is actually a bunch of shape layers created inside After Effects. If you want to see how I did it, you might consider buying my full training DVD Motion Design with After Effects. This one have the full story about that among more cool stuff which I'm sure you like. Oh by the way, more on that DVD subject later on, but now I'll just use this clip to demonstrate the audio waves animation we did earlier. So let's quickly add a background to this comp to make it more lively. Make sure nothing is selected on the timeline and select the rectangle tool and double click on it. This will fill the screen with this shape. And now let's choose a radial gradient fill from the colors above. And I will choose black on the right and orange on the left. Then I'll choose OK and I will drag the little handle here until the end of the screen. Also I will make sure that the line is set to nothing here and place this layer behind the 3D speaker. You can also rename it a BG for background. Now drag the audio waves clip into the timeline and scrub the playhead a bit forward to see it. And let's place it here right to the speaker. Now you can see it only leaves for one and a half seconds on the timeline due to its short duration. But we were clever enough before to create it as a looping animation, so we can repeat it as many times as we need. To do so, return to the project panel, select the clip and drag it onto the interpret footage icon. Or if you're working with version CS3, go to file, interpret footage, main. Here you can set the loop options so After Effects will loop it as many times as you want. I'll set it to 5 because my comp is very short, only 5 seconds long, and I'll press OK. Now you have enough content to stretch, and you can take your out mark and stretch it until the end of the comp. I'll also change the blending mode for this layer to an add mode, which works nicely with the background below. Let's now lower the opacity to say 30%. Now let's select this clip and duplicate it using command or control D. We'll select the new copy and with CS4 we have a nice option here under layer transform you can choose to flip horizontal. This will flip the image 180 degrees and if you are working with CS3 you'll need to go to the scale property and enter minus 100 only on the X axis. Anyway, now I can drag the second copy and place it in the correct place here in the comp view. And there you have it, a nice trick to create an audio waves that simulate music, speech or even noise, whatever you want, you're the boss. Okay, nice. I think I'll now scale down this speaker to 85% to make some room for our second trick. And I'll show you this trick on part 2 of this tutorial. Make sure to tune in, you don't want to miss it. But until next time we'll meet, this is Eran Stern for creativecow.net saying goodbye.